We have now spoken about the fact that the Reserve Bank, which is the central bank of South Africa, can influence all interest rates in the country through influencing or, or through determining the level of the repo rate. But we have not really given attention to all the different interest rates that exist in the economy. So now we are going to talk a little bit about this. Um, a very useful tool to indicate the relationship between different interest rates is the yield curve. So I'm going to explain to you what a yield curve is and then we're also going to show you a little bit what kind of information is contained in the yield curve. So what we have here is a diagram where we have the interest rate level on the vertical axis and the term to maturity in terms of days on the horizontal axis. Now what I've done here is to put a few different interest rates on this diagram. Here I've put the repo rate which is currently um, today on the 18th of September 2014, 5.75%. Then an Little, an interest rate that's a little bit for a longer term, the three-month Treasury bill rate, it's 6.01%. The six-month Treasury bill rate, 6.14%. Then I've also put the, a, a bond rate, the R157, which is going to expire in 2014 at the end of this year, so it's going to run for a few weeks more. That was at 662 and then I've put the R186, which is only going to expire in 10 years' time, in 2026, um, and that interest rate was 8.08%. Now, the purpose of this is just to show you that the longer the term to maturity, the higher the interest rate will usually be. And this will usually be the shape of the yield curve. Now, the reason for this is that the future is uncertain and therefore there is more risk attached to investing in a longer term instrument such as a 10-year bond. You don't really know what's going to happen to in the future. You don't really know what's going to happen to inflation rate, how much the rand is going to be worth. So there's more risk attached to investing in a longer term instrument. And that is why a yield curve will usually have a positive slope with lo longer term interest rates having a higher return or a, a yield than shorter term interest rates. Now, as I've indicated, we call this a yield curve. So the information that, that ha is available in a yield curve, it shows you the relationship between short term interest rates and long term interest rates. What is important is that this information on a yield curve is for a particular day. So it shows all the different interest rates on a certain date. Now what will happen to the yield curve when the repo rate goes up? Usually what will happen is that the whole yield curve will move upwards. So the shape of the yield curve will stay more or less the same because there's still more risk attached to investing in longer term instruments, but the whole yield curve will move upwards. But sometimes the slope of the yield curve can change. For instance, here we have a yield curve that has become more steep. Now the reason for this would be that there is probably an indication that short-term rates are going to increase in the future. And the moment that happens, longer-term rates, bond rates, will usually start to increase, even though the short rate, the repo rate, does not change. And therefore, the yield curve becomes steeper. Sometimes, the slope of the yield curve can become negative, as we have here, this red curve. And this will happen when there is an expectation that short rates are going to 
decrease in the future. So when the yield curve has a negative slope, it is an indication that interest rates are expected to fall sometime in the future. Now, what I've done here is to put the repo rate for South Africa on a diagram, but now I've shown it over time. So I have shown how the repo rate has changed from 2008. You can see it first went up, then it was stable for a while, then it started declining. Um, this is at the level it was at in January 2010. Then it declined, was stable for a long time, declined a little bit, was stable for a long time, and now recently we've had a few increases in the repo rate. So this shows, this graph shows you how the South African benchmark interest rate, which is the repo rate, has changed over time. So it's not the same as a yield curve, and we call this a time series. It shows how a variable has changed over time. Now what would you use this for? What I've done here is to put two different variables so that you can see it is possible to use such information contained in a time series or contained in two time series to compare what has happened to the inflation rate. Here I've shown the inf South African inflation rate for the same time period. What has happened to the inflation rate when the repo rate was changing like this? Or put a different way, how has the inflation rate reacted to changes in the repo rate? So this time series analysis can be very helpful to see if there's a relationship between different variables. You can put all different kinds of variables on such a time series diagram and compare them to each other. Right, so what you have to be able to do is you have to be able to define a yield curve, you have to be able to define a time series, you have to be able to distinguish between the two as far as interest rates are concerned, and then you also have to be able to explain the information that can be contained in a yield curve.